Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of How They Do That. I'm Mark Wallace. Today our guest is Carl Heilman. He's the author of Contemporary Landscape Photography, a terrific book with lots of tips and techniques um, all about landscape photography. Well, thank you for joining us today, Carl. Uh, thank you. It's great to be here. Well, Carl, we really love this book here. Again, it's called Contemporary Landscape Photography. Carl, can you talk, us, uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, how you wrote this book, what's in it, and uh, just tell us a little bit about your book. I, I was trying to reach kind of all levels of photographers. Um, so as I was uh, pulling information together to write the book, I started really wanted to go right back to the beginning and just show how basic in some ways digital photography is compared to film photography and so on. Um, so many people uh, seem to feel that digital photography is kind of overwhelming and my goal was just to show that it is as easy as it was with film. All the basic principles still apply and there are just so many more things you can do with digital photography. It's just so much easier to, to have fun and play with a camera with a, with a digital camera. Yeah, and I really like the book because you really break down a lot of things like different sensor sizes and focal lengths. You've got all kinds of neat charts in there. It's a really, really well-written book. Um, and so we really appreciate that. Well, tell me a little bit about your approach to scenic photography. I know that you uh, don't do a lot of portrait work in this book. Um, why scenic photography and how do you see that differently than maybe other scenic photographers? Photography for me really came as a result of my passion for being in the outdoors. So um, I had done some climbing here in the Adirondacks and uh, just really fell in love with the wilderness landscape and wanted to try to recreate the, the feeling of, of place on film. So when I started in photography, I picked up a, an old manual, an old 101 camera and a roll of Kodachrome 64 and, and set out to photograph the, the outdoor landscape. Um, I, the outdoor landscape is really all about natural light and working with, with natural light and the, um, uh, the details that are around you trying to recapture that, that feeling. So it's a lot different than portrait photography and, and so on. So Carl, you do a lot of high dynamic range images, HDR images, and you talk a little bit about that in your book. Can you tell us how you approach HDR images um, and give us some tips on shooting HDR images? Um, I approach HDR just really by trying to capture the, the full dynamic range of the subject I'm working with. So in a, a bracketed set of images, um, I will have one image that captures all the shadow detail, another image that captures all the highlight detail and I can work with um, both of those images as well as any of the images in between. When I go to shoot an HDR image, um, I'll often, many times I know I need to bracket and I will simply just bracket by three or um, two stop, one stop either way or, or two stops either way and then take the set of shots. Other times if there's some question I'll take a shot I will check the histogram to see whether I've captured shadow detail and the highlight detail and how much of a range I need to capture with a bracketed sequence of images. And then how do you assemble those HDR images? Do you use Photoshop or some uh, special plugins? How does that work in post-production? We have, I've actually been doing HDR for mm, better than 10 years when I realized that um, I was bracketing images with slides trying to get the perfect exposure and I had held on to the bracketed images and we found um, we could scan the, you know, the, the denser image for the highlights and the brighter image for the shadows and composite those together in Photoshop. So we've actually been doing our HDR work here in, in Photoshop uh, right from the beginning and found different advantages to that. Um, we don't get the tone mapped look that happens sometimes and so we end up with a much more natural looking image. In Photoshop, it's a matter of overlaying one image or more over top of the other, and then creating a mask on that layer, and then masking out the sections of that image that you don't want so that they blend in together with another. Now, do you use a mouse or do you use a tablet to, to do all your Photoshop work? I'm just curious how you get those edges so perfect. Uh, we have a trackball mouse. 
and so with the trackball mouse it's easy t easier to place the cursor and click if you need to um, and that's worked out pretty well for us I know a regular mouse just isn't quite precise enough but the trackball mouse seems to work out pretty well I haven't tried a tablet um, we've had such good results using the the trackball that uh, I've just never really pursued you know seeing what it would do with a um, with a tablet a trackball mouse I would never would have guessed that that's pretty interesting okay well, let's talk about your panoramas because you're known for uh, all your mountain landscapes and some great uh, shots of Lake George I think it is um, tell us how you do your panoramas what kind of tripod do you use how do you get those level and how do you stitch those things together in post-production uh, I started out doing my panoramas with film cameras and I had a, a Noblex 135U and a, a Sights round shot, um, the round shot 35 for doing the panoramic work. The, the Noblex gives 135 degrees and the, the round shot allowed me to do a full 360 degrees. So many of the pan, much of the panoramic work I did was with, scanned, was with film and then scanning the film to do any digital enhancement on it. Um, I have found now that that uh, the stitching software is is so good that I can actually go to a location and even just hand hold shots, <laughs> and the software will just stitch them together like perfectly. Um, so it's in some ways it's not nearly as critical as it as it had been when I was first doing photography to be as precise with the the tripod and leveling and everything. Um, I, if I'm really being more precise about stitching panoramas, I would put the, the camera on the tripod. I use a viewfinder grid so that I can kind of keep a check on where, um, where the images are lining up all along the way. It's best if you use a, it's best if you overshoot the area that you want to, that you're composing with, because as the stitching software pulls it back together again, it kind of pulls in some, um, and when you do your crop, it pulls in some where you think your image is going to be. Shooting vertically rather than horizontally allows you to gain resolution top to bottom and also makes it easier to um, have excess top and bottom to work with as you're stitching your image together and uh, looking for your final crop. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about your workshops. I know that you teach a lot of workshops up in the Adirondacks for landscape photography. Can you tell us what you offer and what you teach and what that's all about? Um, we do several different types of workshops from um, many of the ones we do here in the Adirondacks are one-day workshops. I do uh, some comprehensive workshops, which is kind of A to Z in one day where, where I have um, presentation in the morning and uh, time for discussion, question, uh, some critique and an afternoon evening of shooting. Um, I also, we also do photo tours, which are geared more to folks who are, are more comfortable with some of the, the camera mechanics. Um, I also do a, a four-day high peaks workshop. Um, this year we did an uh, Acadia National Park workshop as well, which is a several-day workshop. My goal is to, I, I try to keep um, group size is fairly small so I can spend time with each person. Um, my goal is to try to help each person grow with whatever level they are at. Um, and I find it's a, it's a fun learning experience for everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Carl. Well, thank you. It's been a, a pleasure um, being with you today. Awesome. And remember, Carl's got this great book. It's called Contemporary Landscape Photography. It's by Amphoto. That's the uh, publisher. So look for that on bookshelves. I highly recommend it. Lots of good information. Well, remember, if you have questions about photography, photography-related gear, or if you have a suggestion for somebody that you'd like to see here on how they do that, send your questions to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.